Sudan State Television says the prosecutor's office has accused former Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok of inciting war against the state and other charges that could carry the death penalty. The prosecutor's office is loyal to military chief Abdul Fattah al-Burhan, whose regular armed forces have been at war for a year with paramilitary leader Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo. Fifteen other people including journalists and politicians who, like Hamdok, live abroad, face similar charges such as violating the Constitution. David Monda, a professor of political science at City University of New York, discussed these developments with VOA senior analyst Mohammed al Shinawi. I think the Al-Burhan administration through the prosecutor's office is actually trying to reinforce the authority of the Burhan administration over the former Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok. And I think part of the challenge is a political one because Dagalo has and the RSF rebels have endorsed Abdallah Hamdok and his uh, Takadium initiative to try and bring reconciliation to Sudan. And I think this has robbed the government the wrong way. And this is part of the reason the prosecution is going after him in this way. I think there's another element to this, that the government, the military government is trying to reestablish its authority to show civilians, civil society that are led by Abdallah Hamdok, that the military is still in control. But I think this also needs to be looked at in a broader dynamic where the government has also been cracking down on um, journalists, on um, foreign agencies like Al Arabiya, Al Hadithia, and Sky News from the UAE, which the government feels Uh, have been reporting very negative stories about government defeats, Al-Burhan army defeats in different regions. So I think this whole element is really um, tied into a whole multiplicity of different issues. The fact that the military wants to reassert its control by threatening Abdallah Hamdok because of his endorsement by the RSF. I think secondly, by going after foreign media. But thirdly, around this fact that the military wants to show that it is still in control of of this transition process that frankly never seems to end. Tom Periello, a former congressman recently named to a new position as U.S. Special Envoy for Sudan, said that talks to end the Sudan war could start around April 18th. Hamdok has been in talks for several months with Sudanese and regional figures in a bid to put an end to the war. How would the Accusations against Hamdok and other civilian politicians impact the U.S. proposed peace talks in Jeddah to end the war. I think it's a major blow to uh, U.S. efforts to try and broker, you know, a deal, you know, through Saudi Arabia because uh, Abdullah. Hamdok is revered as uh, the leader of the pro-democracy movement that removed the dictatorship of uh, Omar al-Bashir. He was central to the uh, power-sharing agreement that the military Uh, decided to scrap. And I think it would be very difficult for there to be a peace process with civil societies and with democratic forces uh, led by Abdullah Hamdok if, for example, he's imprisoned, if he's assassinated or any harm comes to him, because then that will really radicalize the democratic forces, the civil society uh, groups, and also the belligerents on the other side, the RSF. So there has to be some kind of rapprochement between the Sudanese armed forces, uh, Al-Burhan's regime, and uh, Abdullah Hamdok in order for these negotiations to go forward, because I do not see how Tom Periello is going to be able to mediate when there's nobody on the other side of the table facing the generals from Khartoum, because Abdullah Hamdok has either been imprisoned or uh, other harm has come to him. The former South African Speaker of Parliament was arrested on Thursday over allegations that she received about US dollar 135,000 in bribes in the latest corruption scandal to face the governing African National Congress Party. Nosivi Wemapisa Ngakura turned herself into police in the capital, Pretoria, on Thursday and was taken to Pretoria Magistrate Court where she was released on 50,000 rand, that's US dollar 2067 in bail. 
Mapisa Ngakula maintained her innocence and suggested the charges against her were politically motivated, with the country set to hold national elections later this year. That for the follow weeks of controversy over allegations that Mapisa Ngakula received 11 cash payments from a defense contractor when she was Minister of Defense between 2016 and 2019. Her Johannesburg home was raided by law enforcement officials and she was informed that the state intended to charge her with 12 counts of corruption and money laundering. She resigned as Speaker of Parliament and as a lawmaker days after failing in a court bid to block her arrest. She told the court on Thursday that she was not a flight risk and would have a lot of to lose by evading her trial, including her state pension and access to her Johannesburg-based children. Prosecutors did not oppose Mapisa Ngakula's application for bail. Her case has been postponed to June 4th with prosecutors saying they plan to add another defendant. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.